The Nikola founder, Trevor Milton, is in a lot of trouble. He's in more trouble than we originally thought. If you need a quick reminder of who he is, he's the one that started Nikola, and he made a lot of false statements and even made false presentations like this one here. This is the Nikola One in Motion. It's one of their biggest products, but the issue is, is that right now in this video, this truck is not driving. The truck is rolling down a hill, but some of the shots in this video are so deceptive, they make it look like it's going uphill. Like this one here, it looks like it's driving uphill. But in reality, this truck had no powering of its own. The only thing that was actually powering this truck was gravity. Now, sometime after that video was released and other marketing materials, GM, the largest OEM in America, entered into an agreement with Nikola. This was huge news. I remember people talking about Nikola in a very bullish manner, saying that now GM is going to be manufacturing Nikola trucks and the Badger, and that it's going to be a mutual partnership to compete against Tesla. Well, of course, soon after that, only a month later, the short seller Hindenburg Research released a scathing blockbuster write-up on Nikola, saying how to parlay an ocean of lies into a partnership with the largest OEM in America. Now this Hindenburg research report is extensively detailed. It's over 30 pages long, showing that Nikola was highly deceptive. They lied to investors on a variety of different topics. Now after that Hindenburg research report, around six months later, the DOJ formally charged Trevor Milton in a securities fraud scheme. They say that this is a criminal indictment, charging Trevor Milton with securities and wire fraud in connection with the scheme to defraud and mislead investors about the development products, and technology by a company he founded called Nikola Corporation. In it, the two lawyers from the DOJ also repeated the same things that Hindenburg Research said, that he repeatedly and brazenly lied on social media, on television, on podcasts about the technology of their company. So now Trevor Milton is awaiting trial. The trial is scheduled to begin April 4th of 2022, so it's coming up soon. Now Trevor gets to wait for trial in his gigantic Utah ranch. Now, say what you will about the company and the lies and the deception and the fraud and all of that stuff, put that aside for a minute, this is a lovely ranch. I think he has pretty good taste when it comes to picking out a giant mansion to live in. But for me personally, I think it would ruin the luxury of living there if I know there's a good chance I'm going to prison in just a year. Now, while he's also waiting for trial, he's dumping his stock. Nikola, the corporation, is paying out huge fines to settle fraud allegations, and investors in the company itself are dumping the stock as well. It's rolling down a hill faster than their truck. Now, you might think that the story has ended here, and we have to wait for trial to see what happens, but there's actually been a huge update to this story, and that update is the Nikola Motor Company presentation to the U.S. Department of Justice. After reading through this presentation, it is abundantly clear that the whole purpose of this presentation is to guard Nikola the company and specifically throw Trevor Milton under the bus, hang him out to dry. In this presentation, Nikola did everything they could to make sure that Trevor Milton, him and him only, fell on the sword for the rest of the company. Let's go through a couple examples here. You have Kim Brady, the chief financial officer of Nikola. In April of 2019, in a video from a fuel cell vehicle workshop, Trevor Milton states, quote, we have 3.5 megawatts of solar panels up on the roof producing around 18 megawatts of energy a day in our headquarters. That was just a statement that Trevor Milton said. But Kim Brady now says this, this assertion is quote, completely false. Nikola had merely discussed moving to an off-grid headquarters, but it was deemed cost prohibitive. So Kim Brady, the CFO, is sort of testifying against Trevor Milton with this false statement. And this is something that's repeated within this presentation. Later in the report, in December 2019, in a live-streamed Nikola event, Trevor Milton states, quote, we're building out the hydrogen station right now globally. In America, we've already got the largest hydrogen station in the Western Hemisphere at our headquarters. It can produce over a thousand kilograms a day on site. The station's already up and operational for pumping right now. Regarding hydrogen fuel, Milton says Nikola has been able to, quote, chop the cost of hydrogen from 16 kilograms down to, we're down to below three kilograms on our hydrogen now. And that the, quote, standardization of hydrogen stations was the most important aspect of cost savings. Now look at how the executives of Nikola Corporation respond to this. From the VP of Technology, Milton tends to mix up we plan to have with quote we have when speaking in public. Those are two different phrases that you really can't mix up if you're a CEO. Planning to have something is not illegal to say. Saying we have something when we don't is illegal to say. Mark Russell, the current CEO, says 
This statement is, quote, indefensible. The headquarters station is for storage and dispensing, not production. Kim Brady, the CFO, says it is, quote, a false statement that Nikola is producing 1,000 kilograms a day of hydrogen at the headquarters. Britton Worthen, the CLO, says the statement that Nikola can produce 1,000 kilograms a day is not true. We discussed this, quote, a million times. Milton states future plans as if they are present reality. Dale Prowse, the global head of infrastructure and development, says it is false for Milton to say we're down below 3 kilograms a day on hydrogen now. There is no our hydrogen. Nikola is not producing any. So now we have the VP of technology, the current CEO, the CFO, the CLO, and the global head of infrastructure development all making statements that are testifying against Trevor Milton. Virtually everyone on the executive team of Nikola is saying that he's the liar in this company. And this report continues on with statements of different members of Nikola's corporation testifying against Trevor Milton in particular. For instance, he talks about the inverters. Trevor made the statement that other OEMs are asking us to use it. Well, Kim Brady says that Milton's assertion that other OEMs have asked to use Nikola's in-house inverters is quote, complete fiction. Verigen, the global head of vehicle electric and control says it is not true that other OEMs asked to use Nikola's in-house inverter. Kevin Link, the chief engineer, said it's possible that they could have asked to use Nikola's inverters, but those inverters are owned by Bosch. Here we have more members of the Nikola company coming out against Trevor Milton in particular. On page 75, the Nikola One unveiling is probably the most damning. You have Davis, Link, Epperson, Brady, Carmella saying, the Nikola One unveiled in December 2016 was not, quote, fully functional. Kevin Link, the chief engineer, said there was an instruction, potentially from legal, to Nikola employees before the event that they should be careful not to say the vehicle was, quote, fully functioning or driving or an H2 vehicle. The VP of technology said that Bosch attendees saw it as a concept truck at the time. And this is all during a time when Trevor Milton was selling the truck as not a pusher and fully functional. Now, moving on from all these statements against Trevor Milton, they also have on page 126, a write-up of Trevor Milton's character. This was given to the DOJ. They said, a visionary struggling with execution, manic behavior, desire for control and difficulty tolerating challengers, desire to lead a billionaire lifestyle, trading stock for assets, focus on stock price, preoccupation with social media, distorted perception of the truth. So now the Nikola team has moved from specifically saying all the things that Trevor Milton said that were wrong and those false statements to now describing him as this visionary, manic, billionaire wannabe person that is obsessed with social media and can't handle dissent. Now what I've showed you so far is not even half of this report. It goes on in extensive detail with more statements against Trevor Milton, more characterization against Trevor Milton. Everything is solely focused on protecting the company and the entire executive team aside for Trevor Milton. He is the one that they want to solely be responsible for all the crimes that Nikola did. And although I think Trevor Milton deserves any punishment that he gets, he did lie to investors, he was deceptive, he stated lots of technology that the company didn't have at the time, is he really the only sole one responsible for all of this? There's a lot of people involved in this company, in key positions, lots of different executives. Are we really to believe that none of them knew anything that was going on and they were just along for the ride, surprised as everyone else when all this came to light? I don't really think so. I think that some of them had to know what was going on. And this whole report that's trying to put the blame solely on Trevor Milton seems like an effort to just protect the rest of them. Britton Wortham, the chief legal officer of Nikola, joined the company in 2015. He's been there for the entire time as their legal officer. Kim Brady, the current chief financial officer, joined in 2017. He's been there for years as well, before most of this stuff took place. And Mark Russell, the current chief executive officer, joined the company in early 2019. How was he not aware of the things that went on? He was there before most of the damning evidence took place. Despite being there for years prior to all these crazy deceptive acts happening, none of them have been charged with a thing. The only person that's being charged with anything is Trevor Milton. And all the other executives at the company are fine putting solely the blame on Trevor Milton with reports like this trying to shield them from any liability. Kim Brady, the chief financial officer, also denied the Hindenburg research when it was initially released. He said, quote, the short seller hit job is a character assassination on our chairman and founder, Trevor Milton. There is no substance to it. That is a direct quote from the CFO, Kim Brady. Also, after the Hindenburg Research Report, Nikola the Corporation published a statement saying that it was false. 
Keep in mind that this is published from Nikola Corporation, not from Trevor Milton specifically. Nikola believes that the Hindenburg Report and the opportunistic timing of its publication shortly after the announcement of Nikola's partnership with General Motors Company and the resulting positive share price reaction was designed to provide a false impression to investors and to negatively manipulate the market in order to financially benefit short sellers, including Hindenburg itself. So after this damning report came out from Hindenburg Research, calling all the lies of Nikola, the company didn't come out and say, hey, this has been lies all along, it was because of Trevor Milton, here's what really happened. That's not what they did. They doubled down on this. The company Nikola responded by saying that this is all false and it was defamatory and that Hindenburg Research was just trying to benefit themselves. But now that same executive team, the same group of people that were defending Nikola, defending Trevor Milton, have now changed their tone. Once they realize that Trevor Milton is in trouble, they're now trying to shield themselves by saying, hey, it really had nothing to do with Nikola as a corporation or any of the other executives. It was really just Trevor Milton. He's your guy. He's the one. Don't bother looking anywhere else, you got your guy. So as much as I think that Trevor Milton was certainly in the wrong and he took the company in the wrong direction, I don't for a second believe that he is solely and uniquely and only responsible for all these deceptive acts. The entire executive team seemed to be more than supportive when things were going well and they're making a lot of money. But now that the tides have turned, they've hung Trevor Milton out to dry. And I think that there should be more than just a $125 million fine to Nikola the corporation. Something that doesn't really affect any of the executives personally. In my opinion, fair is fair. And the rest of the executive team should be looked into as well. So that's what we know so far. Stay tuned for future updates. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon. That helps out getting notifications. And I'll see you in the next one.